Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our Good Shepherd Sunday worship. It is the fourth Sunday of Easter. A delight to be together to hear the word of the Lord this day. Our service follows divine service one, uh, the service of the word. We had been using the Matins service for the last uh, month and a half or so, and so moving on to a, a different service in Lutheran service book. Hopefully you received the email that included the service bulletin so you can follow along as you wish. We begin with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our entrance hymn, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want.
since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, Attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this Sunday, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 2. This is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they did not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing our next hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus says, I am the door. I suppose there are times when Christians need to get comfortable with exclusivity. It's not easy being exclusive. It's certainly not easy being excluded. And what's something you and I hear frequently? We're all in this together. We're all in the same boat. Some boats may be bigger than others. Jesus has no problem with exclusivity. We do. We like to be equal. We like to have equality. Jesus is about equality as well, except when it comes to salvation, except when it comes to where God wants you to be. It's not so much about where you want you to be. Where does God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit want you to be? Jesus says, I am the door. Not one of many doors, not a door, the Jesus gives us a very nice history lesson, though sometimes we may not like the history lessons because they reflect poorly on us. But Jesus talks about all those who came before him, those who tried to get into a sheep pen by other means, scaling the wall, trying to get in and do what they do best. Thieves and robbers who come only to steal, kill, and destroy. And you know a bit about the Bible. You've had wonderful Sunday school teachers. The Word of God is in your hands, in your ears. You know what the thieves and robbers look like in the Old Testament. You know who the wolves were. Sometimes they were dressed like kings and priests and prophets. God's people, as in the days of Jesus, were often like a sheep without a shepherd, just wandering around, getting into trouble, into danger, people in need of rescue. But Jesus, the very Son of God, the one who was sent to be the Lamb of God, he's now on the job as the Good Shepherd. As the door to the sheep pen. As the only one who can do the job that is needed. Jesus makes an exclusive claim. And that's good. Even before there is Old Testament Israel to give us some history. There was history before that. We understand God's exclusivity. Not meant to shut people out. Not meant to keep people away. But meant for intimacy. For God being with his people. So what was there before there was Old Testament Israel? Well, I 
I suppose we go to the time of the judges, and before that, the patriarchs, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And before that, Noah. But keep going back to Adam and Eve. How exclusive was God? Well, we know that someone got into the garden, Satan, an angel who rebelled. Jesus talked about how sheep will not listen to the voice of a stranger. But you know that sometimes strangers say things that are so very, very similar to what you know. Satan's temptation to Eve, it wasn't a threat. I don't think there was any danger there. It was just a simple question. Did God really say? something that looks good be bad? Did God not make that tree? God made it. It can't be bad for me, can it? You'll know good from evil. Doesn't that sound like something God wants you to know? Wouldn't it be nice on an everyday basis to clearly see what is good and what is evil? Wouldn't that make your decision-making a whole lot simpler? This is good, this is bad. Oh, now I know what to do. You'll be wise, Satan said to Eve. Wisdom's not. that wandering is kind of fun. And before you knew it, Adam and Eve were on the outside. They were excluded from the garden. And what was blocking the way? What was in the door? What was blocking the one path that was there? An angel with a flaming sword. Adam and Eve were now eating bread by the sweat of their brow, dealing with thorns and thistles where previously there had been none. Life was a life of labor and hardship and toil and drudgery. The same day after day after day after says many, but is it really? We've been doing this for so long. Sheep who love to wander. Sheep who stray from the side of their good shepherd. It's never been easy to be a sheep. Thieves Wolves, robbers, all sorts of predators out there. It's certainly not easy to be a sheep today. And I don't imagine it's going to get any easier in the future. An easy life is not a promise that God gives to you. So don't look for it. God gives you Jesus. The door, the way to get in, Jesus to lead you, Jesus to provide for you. Yes, cool pastures, still waters, a table spread. 
spread before you. His rod and his staff to comfort you. His presence every day. He's not just present for you when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He's present with you to celebrate gifts, new life, new starts, new jobs, new wonderful transitions. Jesus provides the way for you to go in and out and find pasture, to find safety. It's an exclusive claim. There are thieves and robbers inside the church dressed as priests and pastors and church workers who give in to temptation, who look to satisfy themselves. stray from the good shepherd. Continue to look to him as the one who is on the job, protecting the lambs and sheep of God, speaking to them words that we know are true, words that call us to repentance. Words that call to us to look upon the cross and see our good shepherd as the perfect sacrifice, as the Lamb of God who bleeds and dies to take away the sin of the world. He makes an exclusive claim, and that's good. We should be confident. Because it's the claim that draws us and all who believe in him to an intimate relationship with God. We would be celebrating Confirmation Day today. We will at some point. Don't ask me when. But is there not an exclusive claim in our confirmation? There is. We pledge. We affirm. We swear. We make a vow to follow Jesus. To acknowledge the Father as our Creator the Son as our Redeemer, the Spirit as the one who makes and keeps us holy. We make a vow to follow Him wherever He leads. We make a vow to be known by God and to know Him Today, we do indeed know him. Who is he? He is who he says he is. I am the door. We go in and we go out. We find all that we need. We find Jesus, our good shepherd. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We now join in speaking together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for the abundant mercy that you this day so richly have provided for us, blessing us not only with daily bread for our bodies, but also with heavenly food for our souls. Grant that your living and powerful word may abide in our hearts, working mightily in us to your glory and for our salvation. We commit ourselves to your divine protection and fatherly care. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Look in mercy on your church, and deliver it from all danger and adversities. By your Holy Spirit, comfort and strengthen all who are in affliction or distress, and grant your abiding peace to us all. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the epidemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort those who mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Visit, O Lord, the homes in which your people dwell, and keep all harm and danger far from them. Grant that we may dwell together in peace under the protection of your holy angels, sharing eternally in your blessings. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our concluding hymn, I am Jesus, the little lamb.